thank you for joining me on this and thank you for encouraging me to do uh, do more lifestyle videos. We're gonna do some beer making, we're gonna do some wine making, we're gonna do some pizza making, and just the stuff that we think is fun. Hey, you get to hang around with your dudes, your friends, your buddies, and we make wine. Why do you make wine? It's almost the exact same equipment and chicks love wine. I'm just saying. Nothing more fun than making your own wine, hot summer night, pizza outside in the Italian pizza oven. Those videos are coming soon. And some chilled white wine, just magic with friends. That's what it's all about. We are gonna just relax today. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna start with water. We're gonna add some grains. And we're gonna make some tea. We're not boiling it, we're just gonna heat it up. Then we're gonna add some stuff to it. Then we're gonna boil it. After that's done, we're gonna chill it down. This one goes in, this one goes out. So we can add yeast to it. It was just wort, but now it's beer. Then we gotta wait a week, and if it's bubbling, it's working. And if it's working, it looks like this. We gotta let that go for about a week. We're gonna test it to make sure all the sugars are eaten, and then we've got beer. Yes. We're gonna clean some stuff. You gotta clean a lot of stuff in beer. When you make beer and wine, you're cleaning all the time. We're gonna get to work with some sexy equipment. And this is truly one of my favorite parts too. Playing with the equipment, making sure it's all clean and nice. Today is gonna to be our first beer making video. What's so great about this one? It's gonna be how to do it amazing and easy. This is cheap to get into, it's easy to do, and of course, you know me, I gotta kick it up a notch. So I got some fancy equipment, but you can start with a Yugo with your mom's soup pot and a five gallon bucket. And some of my equipment down there, you're gonna see Rolls Royce. Not Rolls Royce price tag, you know me, I'm frugal too. But I've got some fancy equipment that makes it even easier. I'm gonna show you how to make beer so easy. We're gonna make beer today. So stick around, it's gonna be so much fun. But first, first step is I'm gonna show you where we make beer. You make beer in the beer and wine making room, of course. You wouldn't want to make it in your kitchen sink like we used to do. But you can make it in your kitchen sink. Come on with me. We'll go down to the wine room. Maybe you don't like wine. That's all right. You're wrong, but other than that, you got to keep this <laughs> locked up because it's good. It belongs behind bars. Let's do a box an unboxing of our kit. So it comes just like this. This is all grain. Don't be intimidated with all grain, but yes, do some extract kits first. Oh, let me show you an extract kit real quick. Here's an extract kit. You see the difference in the box size. There's a lot of stuff, a lot more stuff in better kits. One of our favorite kits though is like a $40 kit. So don't be thinking that you got to spend $100 for a kit because you don't. Uh, $35, $40 gets you a wonderful kit. An amazing beer. Brewer's Best is great. There's others. But look what's in here. First of all, the most important part is the destructions. Now, here's my recommendation. If you got your first kit, read this, then read this, then read it again and again because none of this makes sense it's not step one step two it's like step one step two oh forgot to go down here oh wait here we are over here and then oh hold on step three we need to know this this and this so just understand where you're going with this first okay and then real quick here's some here's some um it looks like oatmeal it's just amazing this is wheat here's crushed pale what Malt barley. is it barley all right, so pale malt barley. And then we've got um, the spice pack, which is orange peel and coriander seed, which is a big popular one. This is the extract. So it's basically like honey or uh, what do they call that other stuff? Uh, molasses. Molasses, yep. But it's a, a very fine quality. Here's some powdered dried malt extract, liquid malt extract. And then here are the hops. They come in these little fancy dancy dealios here. Dry yeast, wonderful. Yes, there's liquid yeast. Uh, I'm just telling you, we do a lot of dry yeast. There's even bottle caps if you're gonna bottle. 
I'm just telling you, I did that, and it's 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 hard. It's 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 a lot of work. If you're gonna bottle, I love you. Do the Grosch bottles, the bail top. I'll show you what one of those looks like in a minute. But if you like bottling, knock yourself out. That's the whole great thing about brewing, because it's like, relax. Don't worry. Have a home brew. I've never heard that before. I think we should stage everything right here in front of my girl. She will take care of everything. Marilyn is the best. Here are the bail tops, which you can fill. And then you just put this guy on here and boop, snap it down. It'll carbonate, and when you're ready, you just go. That's what the cool kids do, and it blows up. And or they're, and they're totally reusable, so they're probably 16s, and then they make bigger ones. And you just pop it up, and then boop, and you can reseal it. It's great. And then if you get a keg, you can growl fill, growler fill with these. So it's a growler filler. I should save this for another video. You should. Okay, where where are we at here? Isn't this just a pleasure? Or you can have the fire going. Now the now Blickman makes one hell of a burner. In fact, it's called it's called the Hellfire, and it's heavy as hell because come this way. It's heavy as hell because it's all stainless. Everything's stainless. This is a stainless casting. This is stainless. It even has stainless screening in here, so you don't get spiders in there. Because every year, you know, you get those spiders in there, and then your burner won't light, and you're wondering how what's going on. I'll do a video on this and show you uh, how you can control this wonderful burner. But it's a burner. It's open flame. It's in the house. That I'm not pro I have no problem with because, hey, we get a gas range. But you've got that. You're burning your, your brew bag. Your, uh, you can burn your sugars. Remember, this whole thing's about sugar. So anyway, <laughs> I'll have to beat that out. I'll look it up on yeah, yeah, you can look it up. It's all these words. It's like, we're making tea. We're going to make tea. We're heating the water. We're going to make the tea. Then we're going to boil. We're going to add a little sugar. We're going to put the hops in. And we're done. It's that simple. But anyway, this is a fantastic burner. Don't buy a cheap burner. We've got the turkey burners, just like everybody else does. And it takes forever. You don't want to go electric. You buy one of these, and it, it'll cut your, your brew day time in, in half. Because, you know, what? you want to hang out with friends. But you also want to drink beer, friends. And I've had that for years. That's fantastic. The Hellfire from Blickman. Okay, so here is, this is, and I'm, I just, I'm going to be fully transparent here. This is our very first all grain batch, isn't it? So we've done, we've done extract, which is just all like the molasses stuff. And then we've done mini mash, which is, a small bag, well, just like what we had there, what I just showed you. Some grains, there's some sugar, and it's fantastic. It brings your, your brewing up a notch. But this brings it to the max because you have full control over lots of different things. How fine you crack the grain, and I want to get a grain crusher because you can crush it so much finer than this. You don't want it too fine if you're going to be doing it regular. But if you're going to be doing it in a bag and you can use one of these 200 microns, you want to get it as fine as you can because it's a more efficient mash. So you open this up. You made a great decision. This one's from Northern Brewer. So the most important thing in the bag is uh, extra. What is this anyway? It's extra alcohol boost. So this will jack you up an extra 1%. The only issue with this, and this comes from Austin, Texas. I'm confused. But anyway, the only issue with this is, this is a Chimay Grand Reserve kit. It's already off the charts in alcohol. What is, like 10 maybe? Yeah, nine or 10, I think. Nine to 10. So an extra percent, we're probably not gonna use that. Three HBU hot packs. Everything's double, we're gonna make a double batch. We're gonna throw everything in. Here's Paradise Seeds, which taste peppery. I don't know if you break them or you chew on them, very peppery. I don't know what the purpose of them being in there is. Multidextrin, this is going to give it more body. I always put this in. And it's so cheap. You know, maybe two or three bucks. More Paradise Seeds. There's a double. Belgian Dark Rock Candy. Or Candy. 
very funny. But look at how beautiful this is. Just gorgeous. I'm put that in there in the boil. Any of the candy goes in the boil. That we know. First broker. Okay. Now we, Ron, we're going to have to look it up and find out which ones go where because you are absolutely right. There's no instructions here. There were no instructions whatsoever. This is um, was there yeast there? Yeah, world flock. It's got something to do with the flocculant. Like instead of putting Irish moss in, flocculant is like the little snowflakes that's inside the sea monkeys, and this stuff gets in there grabs hold of that and drops it to the bottom, so you're not. I didn't hear you say anything about yeast. Is there a yeast packet? Yeah, there's a yeast fuel. Ah, there's no yeast packet. I'm glad you asked. I usually, because they ask you, would you like the liquid yeast? Well, if your gravity, they call it specific gravity, we're gonna measure that once we get all the sugars rolling and we're all done, we're gonna measure the specific gravity and there's this floaty thing and it floats in sugar and then it sinks when there's no sugar left. That way you can tell where you're starting and where you're ending. Floating and thing is called a hydrometer, by the way. It is called a hydrometer, <laughs> yes. I want to keep this simple. <laughs> We've got the science expert over here. Yeah, well, you should have got, him do the video. He's got with a PhD. I just, I just, I'm just nothing. That hydrometer will show you the original gravity and then the final gravity. Now also, you'll also know, it'll. So it's gonna start bubbling with the yeast and in about seven days it's gonna stop, but it's not there yet. And it'll tell you where you need to be and you need to be down here. And that's where the hydrometer is gonna really come in handy and tell you there's no more sugar left. The yeast ate it all, now you can keg it. The only thing is that some of these yeasts, remember there was only dry yeast for a long time. This new liquid yeast, which is very expensive, about $10, instead of maybe three dollars for the dry yeast because it's there's so many there's so much variety so there's so many people doing so many great things with microbreweries they are all getting strains of their yeast you can really narrow down to the exact flavor you want to me it tastes pretty much the same and the problem with the liquid is it's expensive which i don't care if it's expensive what i care about is it's real finicky so if it says you need to keep this refrigerated till October, and you had it out of refrigeration for two days in in June. It might not be any good anymore. You have to go a day over the expiration date. You usually, it'll do it either. Exactly, you're hundred percent right. I want to say that from experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we both experienced that. So you put it in. This is your baby. You put in the yeast. Nothing happens for you know, two weeks. Well, you get a big problem. So I just go with the dry. Ron and I thought about it and said, hey. Well, you should you should mention the fact that we made two batches together and we separated out and did one with the liquid yeast and one with the dry yeast. And basically, taste-wise, there, there was no difference that I could see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no taste difference, a Just, third the price. Yeah, it's not a dollar difference, no taste difference. Here's another key thing that's really important. If the specific gravity is real high, sometimes you could, like this beer, this will be, and then remember we talked about jacking it up an extra percent? This beer will take three of those yeast packets. So you might pay, I think this kit's maybe like 70 bucks or something like that, 60, 70, 60, 60 bucks, 70 bucks. And then you're gonna put $30 worth of yeast in it. That's just crazy. When you can do the dry, which is a lot more durable, and that dry is gonna be in the $3 range. So it's up to you, do what you want. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of yeast lovers out there who will give me some uh, bad comments and everything. Please, I wanna to learn too. I remember I'm just starting with this. I, I started 25 years, 30 years ago, and then I had nobody to drink beer with. So I quit and started doing wine. Well, now I got all the women in the world and uh, they kind of call me Hugh Hefner, right? Don't you call me Hugh Hefner? Uh, maybe. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't have a witty response for that. <laughs> but Ron, Ron was saying, Give me the I can't I drink wine script. anymore. I'm like, why not? He said, let's make some beer. I said, okay. So that's how I started this whole thing up again. And uh, I really like it. And I have some dry yeast over here. And we're going to figure out what kind we need and then get back to you in a second. So don't touch that dial. Cleaning bureau is probably not very sexy. Oh, yeah, no. It works. Some of this stuff is not. This is why you sanitize. I am super clean with everything. This was in one of my lines or something. It was in something, but... That is like massive bacteria. If you want to get you and your friends sick, kill your beer and all that other stuff. Ew. So that's why we sanitize. All right, Landon, which is your favorite? I don't know. I'm kind of impartial, but got to say Jesus is kind. Which way does Jesus like? Jesus is serving St. Bernardus right now. And it's one of the top Belgians in the world. You can search all this stuff. I did. It's so easy. Just go on, you know, top Belgian beers of the world. And, you know, you know, here's our top 13 picks. Here's our top 10 picks. I went with the picks that were picked by the guys who own the microbreweries. I'm thinking, those guys know a whole lot more than I do. So that's what I chose. Let's, let's, let's take a little of this out. Oh, yeah. Now, light does not pass through this. Yes. You like it? Let me begin at the beginning. In the beginning, there was beer and there was wine. In the beginning. In the beginning, there was nothingness. Ah. All right. And then Brewmaster God said, let there be wine. <laughs> and there was. And there was. Anyway. So, I don't know why I did that. But. So here's, you want to just start out, you're on a tight budget. Uh, college kid, whatever the deal is, you can start with your mom's chili bucket, clam bucket, pasta maker, whatever. I think this is about a three gallon maybe. You need a good spoon. Remember that spoon that she used when she smacked your ass when you did something like that? Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm becoming you now. So, <laughs> just tell them, there you go. Anyway, that's not annoying. Put that over your head and get the cup of wax. So you, you, here's what you need. You need one of these. One of these, so we're gonna boil the stuff. We're gonna make tea, beer's easy, right? Gotta make the tea. You need a lid, even if it's just a garage sale lid like this one. Can't believe people, this is like Volrath or some super high quality stuff. They usually, they just sell their stuff because they think it's junk. And this is like a $25 lid. You know, this is probably 60 years old. Anyway, you gotta have a lid because you can't boil that much on your mama's stove, unless it's a gas stove. You can't boil that much or it would take forever. And if you had the lid off, it would never boil and then it would just evaporate. So you'd have this much instead of this much. So that's what you need. And then you need one more thing and that is a fermenting bucket. And that looks like this. These are not expensive, maybe $15, $20 on Amazon, something. I'll put a description and a link below of what you need for beginners. A link in the description below. I'll put a link in the description below. <laughs> That'll be in the bloopers. I'll put a link in the description below for the... Oops. <laughs> of, uh, of what you need for beginning beer. And notice that this one does not have a hole in it. Make sure you don't get one with a hole in it because you've got a hole in the bucket, you're going to have a leak in the bucket. But the holes are for <laughs> bottling buckets. This is just a fermenting bucket. A good lid. Got the secret stash down there. I, I got a stash. I got a stash. Look at this stash. I don't know why I have 60 of them. But actually, I do like 8 or 10 at a time. So you're going to put water in there, you're gonna put a lid on there, you're gonna do that, and you're gonna stick it in the hole. Right here. No, just kidding. And you put that in there. And that's gonna keep the, most important, it's gonna keep the fruit flies out, which are also known as vinegar flies. So they can ruin your whole batch of wine or your whole batch of beer. Beer and wine is gonna be interchangeable, so I'm gonna be saying both. But just for the idea, we're gonna make the tea, then we're going to add the hops, 
and then we're gonna put it in here and we're gonna throw the yeast to it and in two weeks you're gonna have beer and we're gonna bottle or you're gonna put it in a keg, it's the same. Same, the packaging is all the same. So that's how simple beer making is. When you're ready to kick it up a notch, get it, you know, take your beer making to a higher level. You can still use this, you can still use this. You can take your mom's pot and just get rid of it. Then you get something like this. Now, am I here to flex? Yeah, I'm here to flex. Otherwise, why well, I could do it in a little pot like that. But this makes it easier, more fun, and you get to flex. Look at this, it's just masterful. Look at this. That's what a lot oh, of beer does to you. Oh, that's over here. It's all the yeast in the beer. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going out with the old and in with the new. Pull it down. That's what I'm trying to do. I need to pull it up. This I is dummy proof, it. dude. Well, I'm a dummy. This guy goes up top. Give me yes. the old one first. Let's get rid of the old one yes. first. Yes. Let's get rid of the old one. Yes. Because the old one is ass. I feel like there's a user manual that comes with this. Yeah, hold on, we'll have to look at it. One would not think that people are this dumb, but yet Lo here we are. Huh? Lo and behold. <laughs> Lo and behold. I like it. Oh, wow. We got instructions after instructions. What What's a Henway? About 34 pounds. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Those are good dad jokes. Solid. <laughs> It's too many words. I need pictures. All right. All right. This is like pyramid stuff. I mean, it's not simple. Okay, we'll figure it out. I hope. Pictures. Are you on? I'm on. Okay. We're going to get to do all this stuff in my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Actually, my kids are my favorite thing. Next to that is the Blickman brew kettle. Check this out. Ah! Gonna have to bleep all those. I'm gonna have to bleep everything. So with the regular kettle, you get this spot here is to, these are called tri-clamps, and you can get other kind of connectors, but these are just cool. Star sand foolproof. This is like phosphoric acid, which is what they put in Coca-Cola. And I drink Coca-Cola, so I figure, well, I'm not gonna drink this, but I'm not worried about it being like some super bad chemical. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this up in here. How do you do it? Oh, no, not this one. I'm gonna do it this way. And I can't see with my glasses, but, or without my glasses. And that's gonna give you about the right sanitation. Just read the label. And we're gonna clean all this jazz. Wow. A spectacular product failure. Look at that funk in there. That's from all that stuff. So it's all the grains and hops and all that jazz. That's all right, we clean it. Let's drain her out again. Now, this is the dip tube. You see this stick sticking down here? And this turns. And then go on inside and I'll show you. See the dip too? So we can actually go down into the bottom or we can pull the liquid off of here that doesn't have all the junk on it and then come on down as we get lower. Now that junk on the bottom is called trube. And it's basically wine, we call it the lees. And I'm not gonna hit you with all these fancy micro brew guys. I need a beard, maybe like with two ponytails or something. At least two. And, and a hat, like a, a, a Castro, Fidel Castro hat on backwards and stuff like that. Dude, I need more tattoos. I have none right now, presently. I'm the most untattooed person you know. I, I just went to Walmart yesterday. You know, that's a lie. I just went to Walmart yesterday and, and I'm just shocked at how many tattoos are out there. Lots. If I was a betting man, I would maybe invest in a tattoo parlor. But seriously, I mean, I got a lot of friends who have tattoos. Some of my best friends have tattoos. So you always say when you're trying not to be uh, politically incorrect? I don't know. Maybe I'll just What's that? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We don't worry about that. This is all stainless steel. This is all Blickman. See the B? 
I like it B because my name is Brad. But I, I really do love the Blickman stuff. There's, there's other ones out there, but I mean, why not just buy the best and be done with it? Now these are called tri-clamps and you got these little washers on there, but we're gonna sanitize. And then I don't know if you can see in here. Oh, let me take this out completely. This stuff is all machined, like seriously. So this, I mean, if you're into this kind of stuff, whether you're a guy or a girl, I mean, it's like a guy thing, I guess, like cars or whatever, but a lot of girls are into it too. You're a guy or girl, this is chub stuff right here, man, I'm telling you. Look at that, feel it. Landon, you, you know about like machining and welding and stuff. We're gonna throw it, clean that off first. Throw that in there. Got to sit and sanitize for a little while. We're gonna do the 200. Sure, why not? Now we're gonna boil all this stuff, so it's not a real big deal. It's just unbelievable how weird this feels. You gotta make sure that the now this is the handle on the outside, and it's got nooks and crannies, right? So I don't know if you guys understand, but we want this smooth, so we're gonna put this on the inside. I think everybody can figure that out. Oh, did you look in the water? Got a little whirlpool going on. That's another Blickman option. And it's not expensive. People just get all this stuff when you're gonna order it. Just do it. And remember my motto, buy nice or buy twice. It's cheaper to get the good stuff. Yeah, watch out. Watch out there now. That's why they got the gloves. That's why I got the gloves. Gloves are for sissies. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. I guess with the microbrewery, you can say whatever the frick you want. I don't think you're gonna insult those guys very much. Those are a tough bunch of guys and gals. All right, let's do this. Let's just kind of move the bag around. Turn your back around. Do, 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 do. Now I'm gonna leave the circulator on because that's gonna help us making our tea really efficient with our tea. All right, we're gonna put the bull clips on, which you can get directly from brew bag. Let's push this out of the way. Ron, I'm gonna do like Rex taught me. We're just gonna bang it in. Bang hole through it in. God, it smells so good. All right, we're gonna just dump the whole thing in here, and there are gonna be a lot of people who are gonna have a hairy connection, but I'm just telling you the way he tells me to do it, and I trust him. Ooh, we're bubbling up. Ron, you need to come see this. This is the sexy stuff here. Look at that. Oh, man. You're about to fill that thing up. It will. I am so glad. I wanted to do two batches. I wanted to do a batch with you and a batch, you know, for me at the same time. So I figured 10 gallons, right? 10 gallons of beer, 15 gallons. So I called Blickman and I talked to them and they have very knowledgeable staff. This sounds like an ad for Blickman, it's not. But they're like, you know what? Why don't you just get the 20 and then you won't have to worry about it. Now and we'll see why. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we'd have been screwed. Where are we here? We're over 16, mm -hmm. aren't we? <laughs> We're right here. Yeah, so just about. Yeah, so, so if you want to do one batch, you need a 10. And if you want to do two batches, you need a 20. And the price difference between, I mean, just, yeah, Romeo, get him, Romeo. Yeah. <laughs> So just any spoon will do. And remember, you can do this on your stove top if you want. But it's so much nicer when you can upgrade when you're ready to kick up your your brew game. The uh, controller is beeping at you. What's it? The controller is beeping at me because it is right there where it needs to be. Now remember, the grains are in the bag and they're up off of the false bottom. The liquid is at the bottom when that dip tube and it's being sucked up and is blown out through this whirlpool here. 
So we should be getting a nice little whirlpool effect, but there's no clumps that I can feel. Let's see if I can pull a clump up. I don't think I can. I think we're in good shape. That's kind of a big thing with so, so much green. Wow. That was spectacular product failure. Yeah. Mm, tastes pretty good. But that whirlpool is gonna just make a huge difference in the efficiency of this mash. Ron's like, stop talking, I just want a beer. I know where to get one, don't worry. <laughs> now the kegerator's not normally down here. We usually have the kegerator up in our tower and that sounds pretentious and it's not really, that's where we spend a lot of time. We call it the thinking and drinking room. So definitely a lot of stories are told. A lot of world problems, politics, money, sex. <laughs> I feel like a lot less thinking, a lot more drinking goes on up there, but might be a little biased. You know, I didn't drink till I was 35, and you know what got me? And no, it wasn't when I married your mother, although that was That's around what the you same always time. say. When we moved here, they have some really crazy old laws, uh, remnants left over from Prohibition. And Ken Burns has got an excellent show on that. Now, let's put this lid on. That's it. Now we don't have to do anything else. We're done for an hour. Oh, let's let's set the commander. Let's hit play. So here we got 158 for an hour and then it's going to go to 170 for 15 minutes. So we're just going to hit play now and then go to home and we're still up. So the grain, the the temperature did not come down, but that's okay. 160 is not going to hurt anything. Sacrification is going to happen. Good. Now, if the heat does come on, a little red dot will come on there and it'll say heat. And it's like, wow, that's easy. So let me tell you real quick. So we moved to this area and it's a dry county. What does that mean? You can't buy alcohol. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, it's not against the law to drink it. Oh, it's against the law to buy it. Okay, so let me get this straight. So every 16 year old kid is now driving 20 or 30 miles to get a beer. Next to the next county and what are you gonna do when you're out there you open up your hey let's have one coming this way so people are getting killed uh, this this county isn't getting the money that county's getting the money they're getting the alcohol money uh, oops bread of gas they're getting the gasoline money uh, hey are you hungry let's go to McDonald's then they're getting the restaurant tax and we're not getting anything stupid 80 out of 120 counties back 35 years ago were dry. 80 out of 120 counties. It's ridiculous. I don't know what the ratio is now and there's there are counties that are wet with dry cities. There are dry counties with wet cities which is still our county. It's kind of silly. You're not gonna have a liquor store in the middle of a field. It's gonna be in where the towns are. I mean Perryville's Perryville they sell beer and what is Perryville? 600 people? 700, 700 people maybe. What is it? 750. I think. 750. So, so they're, they're getting kind of with the times, which is really cool, but there are still other counties. And Kentucky ain't the only one. There's a lot of counties in a lot of other states that have dry laws or whatever they call it. Anyway, but we're doing great here in Boyle. Uh, a couple people who are involved, if you want to know, just text me or direct message me, and I'll tell you, great guys like Jody Lasseter, for one. Uh, he really spearheaded this whole thing. Wilma Brown. Wilma Brown is the one who helped us get uh, alcohol sales in our town. It's not about getting drunk and having your husband laying in a ditch and, and cheating on you and all these things of these um, uh, old fashioned, old thoughts. It's about the other counties getting all our income and you know we can't, we, now we don't have the money for the schools but they do, that's not fair. There's another aspect of that that's changed too, the minute we the minute we had alcohol that we could serve in the restaurants, suddenly Danville started getting hit in all the magazines as a perfect place to retire because the retirees wouldn't come here if they couldn't get a drink with their dinner. And that changed that, changed that whole thing too. And retirees are, are great customers because they're not using schools, they're not using the police generally, right? What, what are they doing? They're just, they're hanging out, they're spending money, they're buying lawnmowers, they're buying cars. I said hanging out many many times there, didn't I? Yeah. A little bit. Well, I'm just hanging out, saying hanging out, so might as well add a couple more. You wanna hang out with me? 
Too much hanging. <laughs> now, the difference between electric brewing and uh, and uh, the, the old gas or doing it on your on your stove top is it's no different it's here, but it's the work you have to put into it. With this, we just set it and forget it. And with the flame, you turn the flame on, you turn the flame, oh my God, we went over. You're, you're measuring it, you're sitting there, you're hovering over it. It's miserable and it's, you know, it's a few hours. There we are, 157.2. I mean, it's so close, like four tenths of a degree is not gonna hurt anybody, right? Watch that when it, when it hits the, the little bit of heat. It's just a blip and it's doing it all automatically. Absolutely marvelous. Did it come on yet? There, there it is. Did you see it? Woo. Let's just slow it up. <laughs> so that's that's all you're doing. So the burner is not getting any any. You know, it's not. The burner is not going to burn the bag. I don't know what these bags are rated for, but now I'm not going to boil it. I'm going to pull it out. Oh, did we set the time? Oh, we we didn't set the timer. I'm so glad somebody's in charge. It knew. So we got 50 more minutes. I think it's now it's time for homebrew. Okay, so we've done our our uh, mash, and which just means you're making the tea. We did 60 minutes, and then we did an extra 15 minutes because with the brew bag, you don't have to take it out and sparge and all this other stuff, which basically means take hot water and pour it over. I see all these guys doing the sparging and they get up to 170. Now, by the time you get it from the stove to here, maybe it's a little less. Then, here's the funny part. Oops. Um, they pour it over like a, um, a sieve. And you know what happens when you pour anything over a sieve. It just all goes to the center. So you're really not getting the grains. Why not just heat the grains and then put them here? Now, here's what we're going to do. So everybody likes to do things a little different. I like to do things better, quicker, faster, cheaper, better. Did I say better twice? Well, that's how much better I want to do everything. Twice as better. Now, let me put this little rascal in here. If I can slide these off my thumb and get them onto this carabiner. Now, I'm going to put this up here. This feels like some kinky thing for a Friday night in New York City. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, how do you do this? Got to pull on both. Okay, so let me get this over here. We got. We don't have to pull on both right now, right? Ah, uh, no. Now watch them screws. Make sure that. I tell you what, there's a lot of weight on this. There's a lot of weight. If it comes down, it's going to splash us. Screws aren't bending, so. Screws aren't bending. Yeah, they are. Woo! This is good. This is wonderful. This actually worked really great. I like it when the plan comes together. So we're going to squeeze our sack. Ron! <laughs> How in the world are you supposed to get that to stop from spinning? But I can see why he has a winch on his. <laughs> so what's your what's your liquid on the gauge down? Oh, that's a good good question. Nine and a half. So ten would be ideal. <clears throat> ten and a quarter would be ideal because this has about a quarter of a gallon displacement from all the junk in there, all the jazz. It has about a quarter of a gallon displacement from all the jazz that's down there. And what I mean by that is the, the boil coil, the false plate, the whirlpool, that sort of thing. All right, let's level up. Let's start this boil. Play. Home. All right. Keep cranking up. Actually, we're ramping. we got to get up to boil first. Oh, my. 
That's a big sack. Ooh. Listen to that. It's amazing. So, one hour after it comes to a boil or one hour from now? After it comes to a boil. Oh, we need to shut the pump off and stop our silicone. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, thank you. The last time you were going to slam me with all the stuff in there, and not the bag, the pump kept just clogging up all the time. Mm -hmm. Just kill me. That was a mess. That was I a hot mess. The bag just solved that problem beautifully. Oh, there's nothing in there. It's just goodness. That's also why the brew bag guy says just grind it as fine as you can grind it. Like it's flour, it's fine. Because it makes the it makes the, the grain efficiency even higher. Uh, we're at ten and a half here. Perfect. That's where we want to be. About about a quarter of a gallon. Um, well, a quarter of a gallon for five, so half a gallon is perfect. So we had very little evaporation, just what we had in here. I just wish we could do something with the beer grains. Could yeah. get rid of the cattle. It's like you ought to be able to make a nice casserole. <laughs> casserole. It smells like you can make a casserole. You can see the line. That's like milk and a cow. Reminds me of my honey. <clears throat> well, we are in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> So bad. So bad. Hey, when we're making beer, you can be a little bit naughty. You all have to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I like sheep. Oh! oh, oh, oh. TMI, Ron. Yeah. TMI. <laughs> Better than chickens. <laughs> oh, chickens. Oh, <laughs> I'll never be able to eat bacon and eggs again. What are we at? Oh, we're at 183 already. Yep, and we're at 11 gallons now. We're at 11 gallons? No, just dip, dip. Last time we were doing mini mash, we weren't doing it in a bag, so it seemed like a lot more work than what it was in the end. Mm -hmm. Especially with the cleanup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Well, doing it in the bag is the way to roll. Yeah, I should see that. So I don't know if it's that much work. I mean, so you're picking up 18 pounds or 30 pounds or whatever of grain, that bag will hold like 400 pounds. So that's not an issue. The winch, I don't know how much that, I'll, I'll look it up and I'll find out and I'll, I'll put it here. Well, that um, be. So that's not I'm an sure issue. Even test that winch. No, I can't imagine. Because it's a double too, it's a block and tackle. I want to see what it tastes like. I think you said it best. Let's do one of each and yeah, then do a taste test. Absolutely, I agree with that. Nothing like A-B testing. Oh, there we go. Right down in. You're a sack squeezer from way back, no. y'all. <laughs> and there she goes. She's going in. No problem. <laughs> That's because I was breastfed. Yes. <laughs> you know how to do it. You know how to extract. You need this here out of the way. And whatever is left in there, we can throw in there in the boil at some point. Coming along great. Just got to get it to boiling. We're going to just mix this up while they're telling X-rated jokes and all that bull. Oh yeah, it's gonna be hours and hours of editing. And while this is draining, it's draining goodness into here. We're gonna get this up to boiling. We're gonna throw the goodness in here, back into here, because why waste it? And we're at 195. Let's turn the heat back on. Boil. So this really isn't, I know it looks like a computer from 1986, but it's really simple. So even I got it and I'm like a visual guy. So I'm a Mac guy. So we're gonna wait until it starts to boil and then we're gonna throw the hops in. If Cindy will oblige, she will show me 
she will show that I'm. Right, 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 right. Well, the hops wait for the last so many minutes to go? These are 60. These are 60 hops. So this will go the whole 60 minutes. I was I looked at the instructions online. And then we've got, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. And then we've got Paradise Seeds go in the last 15 minutes. This German Herzbrucker goes in 15. And then the last five minutes, half of this one and all of this one goes in. I know this sounds like it's difficult maybe, or you're not catching on. Believe me, by your third batch of beer, you'll be rocking it just, just as easy as can be. It's easy. And don't forget these. I always forget that. Now here, in my opinion, this yeast fuel, you got to open that up and take that out of there. It just does not melt. And you got that gelatinous thing in there forever and ever. I don't know. I know. It's like, ew. We still got the pump going. And we just throw our sugar in there, which we did have rock candy. And I didn't take a picture of it. And I'm sorry. You'll have to catch the next one. I got the Whirlpool going, the Blickman Whirlpool. And now I'm going to put the maltodextrin in. Woo! And that's going to give us body. It's going to give us more balls. Because you have to have balls when you have beer. You don't have to have balls to drink beer. You just have to have balls in your beer. This is maltodextrin. And it is definitely a sticky, sugary, wonderful thing that will just give it, you know, it's like extra chocolate to make it extra chocolatey without the chocolate. All right, so we're gonna not worry about sanitization here because this is going in a boiling kettle. So these are the hops that we have to put in here. Whoo, man, is that strong. Interesting thing is, it's not that strong in the beer. I don't know how that works. Wow. But I've marked these out. Now this is, it looks like a lot. Oops. Got a couple of skibies there. Oh. Oh yeah, and then look, that's all there is in there that's like just a couple ounces of hops. They look like little rabbit pellets. Rabbit pellets. <laughs> yeah, feed, not rabbit pellets, like the front, front end, not the back end. And we're gonna put this in this little bag, and that way, this is a brew bag. They call it a hops aromatic bag. And we're just gonna drop that bad boy in there. And then it's just gonna stir around. We had a little boil over which you're gonna get from time to time once you get up to that boil zone. Now, if you had it on flame, it'd be way more violent and, and a, a sincere mess. We're gonna go this, 45 seconds, enter. Then the next one is, what is it, 15 minutes, Ron? I think so, yeah. 15 minutes, so that's our full, or actually 10 minutes. Brad, I don't want to interrupt you. Are you sure you want that lid on? Uh, uh, hold on one second. Okay, so ah! <laughs> you said it at the right wow. time. Wow. Wow, did you say it at the right wow. time? Wow. I said it about a minute ago, but you didn't listen. Uh, <laughs> All right, so 45, 10, and 5. It there we go. happening. I had to scream. There we go. And then back to home. Oh, that 45 bad. minutes. Now, when it beeps, when it beeps, this is going in next. And that was going. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing his thing. <laughs> yeah, he's really dressed in black. There we go. Add another ingredient. Boil complete. Hold on. I got to put both of these in, and then they got to go five minutes. What are they? These are par more paradise seeds. Here we hold go. On, on. I'm against my better judgment. Here we go. We're putting them in just raw. You didn't put them in without a bag, did you? I know we didn't do. We I did, you need to buy more than one bag is what it is. So if you're gonna buy a bag, you need to buy more than one bag. And then only half of these, and the rest we'll just throw away because I'm not gonna collect. I've never had a paradise seed in my life. Maybe a couple more. All right, this is just for aromatics. Yeah, that's about... I should have a little scale down here. If you loved me, you'd get me a scale. So that's Christmas that. is coming. No that's Christmas is coming. Alexa, set a timer for 4 minutes and 40 seconds. 4 minutes and 40 seconds, starting now. Alexa, play I Need a Nap. Oh my God, are you serious? 
Here's I Need a Nap by Kate Winslet and Weird Al Yankovic. Oh. It said at the last five minutes or I did whatever. Yeah, there you go. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. Relax. Have a homebrew. Here we go. We're going to shut this off. This is done. Woo! Off. And then we're going to let it pump and just drain. Alexa, timer off. And then we've got a whole seven gallons. That's a seven gallon bucket. A whole seven gallons of grain. So the neighbor cows are going to really enjoy that. Actually, we're going to give it to our cows. Good. And then we got to chill this down. We got about 45 minutes to chill it down. Don't do the ice in the sink. That's just a terrible idea. I mean, everybody starts that way. Um, I, I guess I started that way too, but get a chiller, get a chiller. It's not that expensive. And then you can do it properly. And the chiller looks like, what is that? Looks like this. So you got two hoses. This one goes in, this one goes out and you can run this through. You can run two chillers. If you're really fancy, you can run two chillers. One goes in ice first, and then this one goes into the beer. Put it in the beer. Now, for God's sakes. Okay, so here's our chiller. This is hooked up to the cold water. That is hooked up to the exhaust. <laughs> exhaust. I don't know, inlet, outlet. I don't know what to tell you. And then here is the chiller. Now, if you feel this, it's got nice cold water going in, and then, whoo, hot water going out. Now this one's a little bit tall for as many gallons as we're doing. So here's my pro tip. Right about there, we're just under 10 gallons. We're gonna add a lot, little water once we put it in. Well, okay, let me back up. We're gonna chill this down. It was at boiling, right? So 210, 212. And I'm gonna just keep letting the pump run. And there you go, we're at 187 and dropping. And it's dropping pretty quick. It's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes and we're going to be down to about well we usually stop at about 80 and then we add water to it but we're not adding water to this we're going to add a few cups we'll take it all the way down to what we need which one are you going to use i think it says t58 for the chimay grand reserve oh god go for the yeah. that's what i'm making for you baby 58 is it green or red, red. We love it too. Okay, it says. Oh, there you go. I could read French. Fifty-eight. It says ideally uh, fifty-nine to sixty-eight. So I'd aim for sixty-five. Okay. All right. Ideally, what is it? Fifty-nine to sixty-eight. Yeah. Okay. That works. I see a lot of guys uh, spray these and spray the scissors. I'm fine with it. I'm good, I'm not above it. Too much work to have it screwing up. So, or for me to screw it up. These are like foil packs anyway, so not a big deal. And again, it's phosphoric acid. You're drinking it with Coca-Cola every day. If you drink Coca-Cola every day. Now 168. Dropping like a stone. Well, let's just test this and see what it's coming out as. Coming out at 109. And coming down. Is something hot in here? Not worth burning yourself, buddy. Oh, I got his bestest finger. Goes in here. Ooh, it's hot in here. Yeah, what did I tell you about that yeast fuel? Can you see that? It, the yeast fuel. It's it's still half of it is in the in the bucket in the thing. Ah, hate that stuff. I should knock it out. Wine is like beer. It's about three quarters cleaning and about one quarter making. So if you don't like to clean your own sink and cleaning up, up after yourself for cooking. You're probably not going to like beer or you're going to have a lot of bacteria. <laughs> there is the hops and all of that was in this bag. And of course it's, it's going down, but all of that would have been in your beer. So that really saves you. All right, Ron, how are we making out here? 
Oh, down to 86. 86. So we just leave the pump running and it's telling us where we need to be. And we need to be about what, 75? No, 70? 65 is probably better. 65. 77 is the top max. Okay. So typically what we do is we're doing the beer and then we're adding extra water to it. But now, not at all, hardly at all. You know, you might be doing an extra gallon the other way, but this way you're only, we're only gonna add just several cups. It's just under 10 gallons, I believe. Ah, I can't really see it right now. Woo! I got the shakies. So that's just coming around. Lipman has a great stainless steel. Everything's stainless with them. We're running some water. I'll tell you, if you're in an area that doesn't have water, we get, we're blessed. We get about a, an inch a week here in Kentucky. And I'm not saying you should waste water, but if you've got a place for the water, run it to the garden. Run it to the garden for sure. Now, what's left after this? Well, basically, we're just drawing it off into fermenters and adding the yeast. Pitching the yeast. And that's just as simple as cutting those puppies up and throwing them in. Now, what we've got is, you gave me two, but I think we need four. So, two for your batch, two for my batch. One doesn't do it? I don't know. Will one do it? Yeah. Let's see what does it say. It sh should say, it says, um, Specialty selected for its estuary, somewhat peppery and spicy flavor development. Sedimentation, medium. Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't say anything about the original gravity or anything. Sprinkling to work. This is 20 to 30. This One of these does 20 to 30 liters. All right, so that's five gallons. That's five gallons. So you only need one in each. Okay, sounds good. Doesn't matter the gravity. Doesn't say anything on there. We'll have to look it up. You're always learning when you're making beer. And it's cheaper than golf. We brought her down to the good temperature. Let's see where we're at here. 68 is the high. You don't want it any higher than 68. We're 67.8. A tenth, yeah, a tenth of a degree is not gonna be a problem. 68.4. Perfect. All right. Then all we have to do left is pitch the yeast. So all these fancy words, but you're just dumping her in. And you don't have to stir or anything. You just put it on the top, and there you go. I mean, we don't do it. We don't stir in wine. See how much more masterful and artful my yeast spreading is? Look at that. Look at Ron's. It's like a bad painting. <laughs> Look at mine. It's like... My initials are BS. <laughs> so we got to put the lids on. I just sprayed a little star sand. Ron, go ahead and beat your lid. Bang it hard. Hit it like it owes you money, Ron. You did it. All right. I can see I did not hit it, did I? No. You're playing. Well, I use a more sophisticated screw top. On that. <laughs> no doubt. Not this bang bang shit. You are <laughs> the most interesting man in the world. We're gonna put a little, we can put star sand in here. We can put anything we want. It's probably the first time I ever put star sand. They say you should put star sand in there. I usually just put tap water. Of course, wine is not as finicky. It's higher alcohol and. Not much higher than this. No, not much <laughs> higher than this. <laughs> now, here's the deal. You see how there's a little concave here? Don't push these in too far because that yeast is gonna start getting crazy. And if it gets up in here, it'll clog it because it's hard and caked sugar. And it'll clog this and then all of a sudden this thing will be like this and that's really not good. You want it to air out. 
So there you go. That's it. Let it rest for a week or two. See you then, and then we're going to keg it. Or we might even bottle some. What do you think? Some. Fantastic brew day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, too. Have fun. Night, night, our little fine feathered friends. Sleep well for a week, and then I will see you, and we will do secondary fermentation. <laughs> And the very next day, actually, just 24 hours later, we finished about 7 or 8 o'clock last night, and it's about 8 o'clock now, and she's rolling. And this is what your airlock will look like, or a lot of people call it a bubbler. That's fine. So we're going to give it a good stir. Just follow your recipe, whatever it calls for. Sanitize your stir stick. There we go. I stir it vigorously enough to get those hops off the side and that's it you're just bringing up the bottom in wine it's called the lees in beer it's called troub and you're just bringing up the the dormant yeast and all the junk and the funk on the bottom so just bringing that up to redistribute it wake up that yeast say hey there's sugar in there but i was just curious and to see if it was working and there it is it's working yay okay so there's the the one that looks like baby poop, and then this one looks like, well, I don't know, something different. Let's take a look. Now, I don't think we're gonna contaminate one or the other because it all came out of this brew bucket. All right, so we're shooting for 10, 10. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. Oh yeah, we're way down. Look at that, or 10, 11. And there we are. So 10, 10, 10, 11. Now this one was, look at that. Yeah, 10, 11, and we are, we're below 10, 10. We're like, look at that. That's about 10, 09, isn't it? But anyway, we're close enough. This is the winner here. And then this one, it's got a little time to go, but that's all right. We're going to rack it into secondary fermentation, let it sit for another week. And then on the weekend, we'll keg it. Woohoo! Okay, I'm doing this one-handed and by myself and all that stuff. But anyway, I spray star sand on the, um, on the auto siphon, which is really a critical, wonderful tool. And I bring this down, put the hose all the way in the bucket. I see a lot of people splashing it on the side. Again, I'm no beer expert, but I think the oxidation is probably worse for it than anything. With wine, you want to degas, but with beer, you're not degassing anything. So... Pretty funky looking, I'll tell you, the color. We can throw some unflavored gelatin in there and that'll really help clear that up. Because you want a clear beer. I mean, if they're really heavy and dark and it's muddy, that's fine. But if they're a little bit lighter, you want them <laughs> maybe not like you're drinking, you know what. Now, look how different they look. I mean, like a ton different. This one was dry yeast only. This one we started with liquid and it was dead. Now it's been in the fridge, but it said June, and gosh, it was just barely June 1st. Maybe it was like May 30th or something like that when we made it, and it just wouldn't do anything. So we threw a dry in there, dry yeast. In fact, whoop, there's a little green pouch, and she took right off. But I tried to keep them separate. Even though they were in the same brew, brew kettle, I tried to keep them separate. So Ron's will taste like just dry yeast only, and mine will have the uh, liquid yeast and the dry yeast. So n no other way to do it except A-B test. Once you get down towards the bottom, I've got my fingers on here and I'm kind of lowering it. I want to make sure I get it all. I don't want to get the junk, but I want to get it all. And you can see the funk on down there. Let's see. See that funk on down there? Woo, that's funky. Let's see, do I look goofy? I love you especially because you watched through this whole video. I highly recommend you look at this next video which I think you'll really like too.